Hi, it's Gary. Welcome to today's video. Today we're going to continue an envelope in this package that I ordered from Cult Pens over in the UK. Previously we've looked at the inks and the accessories that were in it. Today we're going to take a look at the two pens. We're going to look at them, we're going to fill them with ink and do a writing sample. And then I'll give you my first impressions on each of them. So join me down on the mat and let's jump straight in to the first pen. Here we are on the mat. Let's start by taking these pens out of their boxes. The first one we're going to look at is this. This is by Cross and it's the Bailey Light and it's in this gorgeous grey colour. As we can see from the box, it's got a medium nib. Let's take this out so we can take a closer look at it. So I've just undone the top and let's pull this out. So here it comes. And we've got this just white package there. We've got some instructions underneath. I'll pop them all to one side. Let's take the pen out. Okay, so the pen is now out of the packaging. Let's fetch it in. So here we have it. The Cross Bailey Light in grey. Top of the cap, we've got the metal finial. We come down to a little plastic band, down to the clip, which is nice and springy. Rest of the cap tapers up till it gets to the bottom of the clip. Then it seems to level out. Down to again to this metal band. Nice little bit of patterning on there. We then have another little bit of plastic and then a step down to the body. The body to me is tapering down until we get to another silver ring. And then the grey finial at the end just got a slight dome to it. If I pull the cap off, now that's really tight to come off. That reveals this fairly small nib. I paid $30 for the pen, so you're not expecting the biggest nib on the record, are you? But for $30, it's long as it writes, that's all I'm going to be worrying about. So the nib, as I say, looks small. Looks nice though, doesn't it? So the nib's fairly plain at the top. Underneath the breather hole, we've got a logo. And then underneath that, we've got the word cross. I can't see anything on here that indicates the size of the nib. But as I say, it was a medium that I ordered. The only downside with this pen to me is the choice of nibs. But again, it's a cheap pen. I'd have liked to have had the opportunity to have got a broad nib. So from the nib, at the bottom, we've got again another one of those silver looking bands. The section, it's tapering up from the bottom all the way up to another silver band there, which is where the section joins the body. Taking off the body, takes quite a few turns. We've got metal there, so definitely not going to be a pen that I can eyedropper. And I don't know if there's anything in it. Took me a little bit of time, but inside the body, there was a cartridge. This is black. Now, I'm not going to be using the cartridge. I do like to use my bottled inks. So one of the things I got when I ordered this is I ordered a cross converter. So when I put the pen together before my writing sample, it'll be getting inserted and used with the converter. So this is pen number one, which is the cross barely light. Move this to one side. And now I'm going to fetch in the second pen. The second pen I bought, it's a Caveco, and I'm hoping I've pronounced that right. I actually like this box. It's quite small, quite nifty, but it's a small pen in here, which we'll see in a second. Let me open up the end. And we'll take out the pen. So in here, we've got this green Caveco Sport Classic. This is the first time I've earned one of these pens. I've seen a lot of other videos where people have got these. I've never had one, so I thought, let's see what all the hype is about. Let's get one to give it a try. And I've got to be honest, it does look small. In a minute, I will fetch in and do a size comparison with the cross pen with this and a couple of other pens from my collection. $30 again though, so reasonable priced. I'm just gonna turn this around slowly. It's made of plastic. Here we've got Caveco Sport. I'll turn it around so we can read it, then I'll turn it back. So Caveco Sport there in gold. 
well, I'm saying gold, gold coloured. Continue just to turn it around. Nice green colour. As we all know, green, it's my favourite colour. So why wouldn't I get a green pen? So if we take a look at this, the cap at the top here, we've in the finial, we've got a little button and that's that. I'm going to call it brass, that goldy brassy colour. Nice little bit of a pattern on there. We come down into the main cap. So we've got a very sharp tapering up. Once we get up to the main part of it, we've got these little facets there, which are nice. They add a little bit of interest as I'm spinning it around. That's already scratched. So that's going to be one of the things I need to watch with this pen. How easy does it scratch? Let's keep going around. There we go. We're back to the front again. So the cap then is one width, then all the way down with them lovely facets. Then another sharp tapering down with a, a step down and into the main body. Let me take the cap off. So I think it pulls off. I was trying to twist it. Let me pop it back on and try that again. Now it's definitely a twist off cap, which is good. So what does that reveal? Well, I'm not going to show the nib just yet, but the body is one single width all the way down. Then at the bottom, we've got a plastic and a bit of a dome there on that end finial. So let's take a look at the nib. Again, as I would expect, this is a fairly small nib. It's gold coloured. I like the look of it. Let's take a closer look at the nib. So we've got at the top, it's just plain. Then we come down to a nice little bit of decorative engraving. Below that, we've got the breather hole. Then we've got the Caveco logo. And then there's a B there for broad. Nice nib, very small, but it's a small pen. Let me try putting the end on. So this is what it would be like when it's posted. Posted, it's actually not too bad a length. Again, we'll do a size comparison in a minute. Just going to unscrew the section. So we've got plastic section there, and that reveals a cartridge. Now, now this does not take standard sized cartridges and converters because it's just really too small. I was stupid when I ordered this because I forgot to order a converter. Fortunately, it does come with that blue cartridge. So to start with, I'm going to be using the blue cartridge that it came with. I have already ordered the converter, so hopefully that should arrive shortly. And as soon as it does, cartridge will be written out, then some nice colored ink will go into there. It's a shame in one respect because I'm going to be using blue ink from a green pen, but that's a price you pay when you forget to order the converter. Let me pop this back together. Oh, that was a nice popping sound, wasn't it, when it came off? What I'm going to do now, I'm just going to clear this away and then I'm going to come back and we'll look at the pens and we'll look at some size comparisons. So here we go, the two new pens, that cross barely light in grey. The Caveco Sport in green. Pens I'm going to compare it against. The first one is a Pilot Metropolitan. The second one, Lamy Safari. So definitely look at the size difference there between the Caveco and all the other ones. Let's move that grey one over as well. So we're very close. It looks like the Cross Bailey is slightly shorter than the Metropolitan, definitely shorter than the Safari, and I would say it's not as wide as the Safari. So there's the nibs. So definitely smallish nibs, but I wouldn't say much smaller than the Metropolitan or even the Safaris, to be honest. As I've said before, with a nib, it's how it writes. That's what's important, not the way it looks. So we'll know in a minute when we do a writing sample. What I'm going to do now is step away. I'm going to go, I'm going to clean out these pens. I'm going to put the ink cartridge into the Caveco as I clean it. I'm going to do that because I want to give it time for the ink to get through the feed before I do my writing sample. When we come back, we'll look at the inks, then we'll do our writing sample and I'll give you my first impressions. So we're going to start off by looking at what it's going to go into that cross barely light. Well, the ink I've chosen is by Diamine and it's Diamine Filer. As I said, great pen. To me, doesn't matter what colour ink I put in it, it shouldn't matter too much because grey is a nice neutral colour. So I thought to myself, right Gary, what inks haven't you had in a pen yet? And this is the first one that came to mind. And I like my purpley colours, so I thought, yeah, let's give this one a try. So let's go away. I'm now going to fetch in Quickie Koala. That's what I'll be standing my ink bottle in whilst we fill it. Let's fetch in the ink bottle. Just going to give it a quick agitation before I fetch it in. 
There we go. So I'll take that cap off. So there, and push that converter all the way down to the bottom. In the pen goes. Twist it up. For completeness, I always do this twice, so it's going back down again, and then back up. So there we have a nice fill of that dye mine violet ink. I'll just put the pen back together. All right, let's clear this ink out of the way. The paper I'm using today, I've changed the paper for my samples. Before, I used to use an Oxford B5 notepad with optic paper. Obviously, that was too big to get within my camera. And when I was only doing one or two pens, I was wasting half the page because I could only use about the top part for my writing sample. So I've now got this A5 black and red notebook. It's using the same optic paper. So I'm quite happy that the paper type will stay the same. It's just a little bit more convenient for me. So let's go and do our writing. So we have here a cross Bailey light. Should be with a medium nib. And as I say, that was 30 Australian dollars plus I had to pay extra for the converter. The ink, diamine violet. Drying times, so we go media, 10 seconds, thirty seconds, well that's drying off nicely now, then finally one minute. After a minute, that looks dry to me. So yeah, not too bad there with the drying times. Let's take a look at our writing. So what I'll do is I'll reposition the mic so you can hear me write. Not too bad, a little bit of feedback, not overly small. Just gonna check for line variation. You know, I'm pressing a little bit harder there on my downstrokes. If I press hard, I get a little bit of line variation, but not all that much. It's a very stiff nib to write with. It's enjoyable, it's not too bad. It's not something I would go overboard for, but I would say it's not the worst experience I've had when I've been doing one of these videos. If we take a look at the writing, there's not a lot of character coming through, is there? Is there? Yes, we've got little bits of shading coming through, but not all that much. The nib, when I'm looking at it, it looks like it's slightly bent down at the end. I need to do a bit of research on this to see if that's how this nib is meant to be. So there's something for me to do. I like to have some research to do. But overall, not a bad experience. Nice enough pen. I can write unposted. It fits there nicely. If I post it, doesn't feel back heavy. Gives it that little bit extra length. I don't know, I might try writing with this one posted. Normally I use my pens unposted, but this looks like one where it might benefit from having that little bit extra length. Because although it's not too short, it's also not quite long enough. So the cross barely light, yeah, it looks quite nice. So the next pen we're going to look at is that Kaveco Sport. I love the color of this, I've got to be honest. It'll be interesting to see how well this writes. So let's take the cut that off. Now, before I even go to start, there's no way I can use this unposted, but it's the pocket pen it's designed to be posted. Actually feels quite nice like that. Now, I will be honest, I have had a bit of a nightmare getting the ink to go through here. That cartridge, it seems really wobbly and it won't go in any further. It just doesn't feel as if it's the right fit, but I'll know better when I get the converter because hopefully that will fit better. Got to post this one unposted, it'll be just unusable. So we've got here the Caveco Sport 
classic with a broad nib. The ink is Caveco Blue. As I said, I had a nightmare getting the ink through here. It's taken me about five minutes to get it so it would write. I still think there might be some water in the feed, so I think the ink is not the right colour that it should be, but it's enough for me to be able to test this out. Let's look at our drying times. So immediate, 10 seconds, almost dry there, 30 seconds, After 30 seconds, that's dry. So certainly this is a fast drying ink in this nib. A writing sample, I'm going to move the mic so you can hear it right. Then finally, let's see if there's any line variation. I'm going to be honest, I'm not impressed at all. I mean, yes, it's a $30 pen. It's dirt cheap. To me, when I'm writing, I can feel the nib catching on the paper, which is unusual and it's not something I normally get with this paper. The ink, it dries off quickly enough. As I say, I may not have enough ink going through the feed. There may still be some water from when I cleaned it out, but I had such a hard job when I was trying to get the ink to start writing in this. I'm not impressed, but let's fetch the other pen in. Let's take a look at the two together and I'll give you my final thoughts. So what are my first impressions on these two pens? For $30, which is what both of them cost, you know, they're not bad pens. They write, they let me get ideas out of my head and onto paper. And as I always say, that's the only reason that a pen should exist. They're very light pens, they're plastic pens. I knew that going in because that's what I ordered. I'm glad I've tried them both. You know, this is the first time I've tried a pen from either of these manufacturers. The Cross certainly wouldn't have another one of these Cross Baileys. I may try some of their more expensive models you know, but that might not be for quite a while. The Kaveka, really not impressed, really aren't. I might change my mind once I can get a converter in there and get some of my other inks into it, but the cartridge doesn't feel like it fits properly. It's not nice. The ink that I'm seeing out of it, it looks really pale. What I'm going to do is I'm going to leave a day or so before I edit this video and I'll try and do another writing sample with it tomorrow, just in case it was an issue with the feed having water in it, which would let the ink come through and show its true colours. But basically, Based on what I saw in the writing sample, it's very wishy-washy, not very nice, and certainly not an ink that I would want to use on a daily basis. The pen itself, it's all right for what it is. As I said, the nib felt a bit scratchy for me. Would I buy another Caveco Sport? I don't think I will. It's too small. Don't like the experience. Don't like the ink and the way that it sits. Don't like the way that the cartridge feels like it's wobbling, even though it's as far as it will go into that actual unit. Are these worth $30 each? I do think they are. I think they're worth what I paid. I'm glad I got them. I'm glad I've tried them. And I've definitely learned something from this experience, which is these pens, they're just not for me. So it's a couple of days after I filmed the unboxing. And to be honest, I'm still not getting on with the Quaker Sport. And I think it's the ink. I just don't like the ink. So what I've done is I've changed the ink that I'm using. I did that by taking out the cartridge, then using my blunt nosed syringe, I sucked out all the remaining ink, gave it a good clean through. Then I filled that same cartridge with this ink here, which is Cult Pens Deep Dark Green. So green ink for the green pen. And I've got to be honest, I'm enjoying it a lot more now. So I thought, go ahead, Gary, refill a little bit for that review and then tack it on the end just so we can see the difference that the ink is making. And that's all I've changed is the ink. So as I say, this ink, nice. As it says, it's a deep, darker green colour. So let's jump in and let's do some writing. So the pen. Cold pens. Let's try again, shall we? The pen is a Quaker. 
Sport. Classic. And it's got that broad nib. Now apologies, because I've just turned the paper over, this spine does get in the way a little bit. The ink. This time it's coat pens. And it's deep, dark, green. Now already, I don't know if you can see it, but I notice a big difference. The blue ink that came with it was so wishy-washy, where this, it's got that character to it. It looks a lot nicer to me. We'll do our drying times. So we start off media. 10 seconds. 30 seconds. So after 30 seconds, look at that. It's getting really dry now. One minute. After a minute, that's nice and dry, but we'd expect that, wouldn't we, after seeing what the 30 seconds did. Now I'm going to move the mic close to the paper and do a writing sample. I cut the lines down a little bit because obviously, as I said, this red bind, ring binder just gets in my way. But after seeing this, I've got to say I'm happier. I'm happier than I was when it was with that with that wishy-washy blue ink. And to me, this demonstrates the difference that an ink can make to the overall writing experience. The only thing that has changed is the ink. It's the same paper. It's the same pen. It's the same nib. All I did was put in a green ink that I like. And wow, the difference. I'm now actually enjoying writing with this pen and I like it. Whereas whilst I've been trying with that blue one for the last couple of days, Hated every time I used it, to the point that I was thinking, well, shall I just clean it out, put it on the shelf as a, yeah, I've tried it, but don't like it. I'm glad I changed the ink. I'm now finding this is a much more enjoyable experience. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. So what are your thoughts on these pens? I've never had a pen from either of these manufacturers, so I'm interested to see how it goes. And I always love playing around with new pens. How about you? What are your thoughts? What are the things you like to do when you get a new pen? Please drop a comment down below. Let's kickstart the conversation. Hit that thumbs up button, give it a like. The more people that like and comment, well, it helps with the YouTube algorithm to surface my content for other people. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button so that you can get new videos as I release them. I'll talk to you again soon. Thank you.